We begin the current daf in the Sechtes Be'ah Daf Lamed. We begin on the bottom of the Chavtes Mebeis. Three lines up on the bottom of the Amid. We begin the new parak, the fourth parak in the Sechtes Be'ah, parak on Navy, which continues on the theme of the previous parak, continuing on Obed and Luchayil about weekday activities that are forbidden to be done on Yom Tov. Shes Kuspans of Akatzik and Chesed to end the Daf Achaim B'Shem joining us for today's daf. Shem is going to discuss in today's daf are carrying heavy loads on Yom Tov and the permissible ban which is not considered Obed and Luchayil, which is the, the discussion we're having about weekday type of activities. Whether to rebuke people for transgressing isurim or refrain, if the chacham feel that people will not heed them, it's like you better better not to say than to say sometimes. This of uh, performing music on Shabbos and Yom Tov. So the key terms of constantly discussing today's daf are uved in the again, which is the primary discussion we're having in these dafim regarding weekday type of activities, and the concept of hanach lam Yisrael, better leave the Jewish people mutav shiyushegin. Better they do it by mistake by yim and not doing deliberately. If you know they're not going to listen, then let them be a shegin and be a mazer. The Sefer's Yom Kippurim is a biblical law that regarding is supposed to add on to the time of Yom Kippurim uh, from more than the actual day itself. Muktzam Achim is for kids the halacha that something could be considered muktzam, even according to lean interpretations that generally don't hold a muktzam because it's something very expensive and therefore again it's set aside. You wouldn't have a mind to generally use it, then it would be considered as muktzam. So begin the current daf, daf Kaf Tesla Mabez, three lines up at the bottom of the Ahmed, the new parak, parak Hamevi, the mission begins. Hamevi Kadi Yain Mimakum Mimakum. So we're bringing pitchers of wine from one place to another place, either in the Tchum or I mean, through an Eruv. So the Allah is lo yavim b'salab kupa. One should not be bringing it in a basket or in a box, I meaning you'll put three or four jugs into the box and carry it like that, because that looks like a maisa chayl, it looks like a weekday type of activity to carry loads. Avobot, maybe who al kasefai. But what you could do is, as these pictures are cutely illustrating, you could go ahead and put the the jugs on your shoulder, one or two, because it's obvious you need it for Yom Tov, or in or in front, when you're holding it in your hands. So to begin, let's say someone is, is, is transporting straw, where he needs to use it for fueling the oven or for his animals. You shouldn't be going ahead and putting that bundle over your back, because that's disgraceful to Yom Tov. It looks like you're intending to do a lot of work or to take it for a far place. Again, that's a weekday type of activity. What you could do is you could carry it in your hand. Now, what you could do also is you could tint up a of an alf, but in the related halacha to straw, you could begin a stack of straw for fuel that even though you had not prepared it from before Yom Tiv, but and, and you, not, you don't you normally use this for the fuel, which it sounds like from this halacha that, yeah, we don't hold of mukta, even if you didn't prepare it from before Yom Tiv, that you'd be able to start it now and start saying, hey, you know, let me use this for fuel. But you cannot use the wood in the muktza. Now, the word muktza, although we generally use it for like the halachas of Shabbos, the word muktza in Talmudic time actually referred to the backyard behind the house. That was called muktza because it was set aside for the back. Unlike us, when we use our backyard in Talmudic times, people didn't usually go into the backyard. The main one was the chatza, which was in front. In the backyard, they would put the wood and anything else that you really didn't intend to use for a long time, you put in the back. So you cannot use the wood from the backyard. So the Gemara is going to ask what the Sefer contradicts the Reisha, because the Reisha sounded like when you could just start from a part that you never prepared, that you don't hold the Allah Mokta. And then this Allah, the Sefer sounds like that you do hold the Allah Mokta. And the Gemara is going to ask it and have two different approaches. But first time that we learned the Brysa, that although we said that when you're carrying the jugs of wine or that of the straw, that you should do it in a different way, that it shouldn't look like a weak type of activity, we learned the Brysa in Iyav Shalashanas. It is not possible to do it any differently. How so? Let's invite a guest, a lot of guests. You have to bring a lot at a time. Well, I'm going to start now taking one bottle at a time. I got, I got 17 guests waiting for me, and I, if I can't take a box of wine, it's, they're going to keep them waiting. So then, then you're allowed to do it in the normal way, because you cannot do it in a different way. Now, related to this, ask in Rabbah ben Mechuzah. Rabbah instituted in Mechuzah, the town of where he lived, the Dar Baduchka. Let's say you have a load, which generally, when a single person would carry it in the weekday, he would carry it on his shoulder, with a tircha, right? There's a reason why we have all these delivery guys coming and this is a heavy box and he carries on their shoulder. If you're coming to carry it on Yom Tiv, for the purposes of Yom Tiv, for example, a barrel or a sack full of produce, what you should do is Lador Baragla. You should carry it on Yom Tiv, not on your shoulder as you normally do during the week. You should carry it with a, a grasha shakar and forka. It's a, like, like a pitchfork, with the way they generally would carry salt when they were coming to sell it, because you have to do it differently. And when you're changing, you should change it to make your load lighter and not to add more effort in Yom Tov. The pitchfork is easier to carry a heavy load 
when you're carrying something on the shoulder, so you're changing in a more lenient type of a way, making your load uh, lighter. Now let's say the Dorbarago, let's say it's a heavy load that even during the weekday you would, not, you would generally carry the pitchfork. So then the Dorbaagra, then you should carry it on Yom Tiv with two people with a pole on their shoulders, which is also making a change and it's also a change for the, for the lighter. <clears throat> now the Dorbaagra, let's say something that during the weekday you generally carried with poles on the shoulders. So in the Doru, you should carry it on Yom Tiv, that load, Ba'achva, with a, a pole in their hands because again, you want to change it. Now Rashi points out, although it's not really making it lighter, it's still a shinoi, and it's not increasing the tircha with that shinoi, so that's again a, a way to do a something of a shinoi. The Dharb Ha'achpa, but let's say during the weekday, that was the way they normally carry that too. So then Nifris Sudri Laveh, what you should do is put a, a, a cloth on top, which it's not making it any heavier, and it, again, it's just a, a shinoi be'alma, and it's just making it more discreet, and again, just to make somewhat of a shinoi. Now, if it's not possible to do anything differently because let's say you don't have a sheet to cover it, so then sure again, then you would be permitted to do it in the regular way because I'm a Malik, we mentioned before, the Master says, if you can't change, then Mut is going to be permitted. Now, based on this halacha, the Gemara wonders that Amalei Rav Chanan by Rav Rav Asher says, wait a second, Amr Rav Chanan, the Rabbi said, as we just said, as much as you can change on Yom Tov, you change Yom Tov because it shouldn't be like a weekday way how you normally do it. But you have all these women that they fill up from the river. They fill up water in their pitchers on Yom Tov. But like a Mashanian, they don't do any different how they do it normally during the weekday. But I mean, no one says anything. No one says boo. Why not? I thought they should do episashinoi. So Amalei, so on that he said to him, Ravashi responded. He says, Mishan Bleyasha. That was Allah because it's not possible. Because he says like this, Hey, Chalem, what should the women do? What are you going to tell me? If they normally fill up with big pictures, they should fill up with small pictures. You can going to make them go more times. They have to go down to the river more time. And the ones that fill up with small pictures, you're going to tell me they should fill up with big pictures. You're going to now carry heavy, heavy loads, which we don't want to make more terecha. So what are you going to tell me? Okay, let them cover it with a covering of wood, which is made for pictures. So it'll be different. If it's in the novel of Asla to you, something that's going to fall, they're going to come to carry that in a forbidden way, or they're going to come to carry it, which you're going to carry a load, be that as it may, it's something that um, it's not going to make things any better. And we might come to violate something else. So, what are you going to say, Tiktere? So, you're going to tell me that you should tie on that uh, covering that it shouldn't fall as you're carrying it. Yeah, but Zimna the Nifsik, at times it could get detached as you're carrying it. And actually, Vasa Lemik today. You're going to be so frustrated that it got to that. You're actually going to come to do a kesher that's lehiskayim, which is amalacha of kaisher. So what are you going to tell me? Okay, don't do none of these wooden uh, caps, these covers. Just put a, a cloth on top of it. Yeah, bezimnen demitmish b'maya. Sometimes it's going to get soaked in the water of us. You're actually going to come to squeeze it out. So if it's not possible for us to tell the women anything, because there's no real good options to do any do uh, any shinik. Now, a related discussion, the Gemara brings, Amalei Rav about Rav Chanan Labai. He said, it's not, we learned the Mishnah later in the Blah and Vom and Beis that says, that Eim Atafkin, you're not allowed to clap one hand with the other hand. Eim Asapkin, you're not allowed to slap one hand on your, on your lap, let's say on your body, because of, let's say, singing or because of mourning. And Eim Atafkin, you're not allowed to dance with your feet. And all of these are forbidden because of Eisad Rabbanon, as a Gizeh, because you might come to fix a musical instrument, as the Gemara says later on the Blah and Beis. Now the problem is, I believe I today's times we see that people actually do clap and they slap and they actually do dance. But I mean, we don't tell them anything. I uh, it's usur and you have to tell people things. So Malay said to him, according to your reasoning, Hadam Rabba, this that Rabba said. And the reason why we bring this in is because we asked regarding the women that we don't say anything over there. We there we said it because uh, there's nothing to do anything differently. But here we're going to have a different answer for the question. But it was the same type of a question. That's what we brought in. I we're not saying anything. So, but then he he, he responds back. He says, "What do you mean? I we have the Amar Rabba. The Rabba says, Le inish the Rabbah Rabba says that uh, no one should sit by the entryway of the lechi. A lechi permits you by the mavi on Shabbos. Now, a lechi is just a really a thin stick that's standing on the side. A person shouldn't be sitting over there." Because Dilma began Lechevitz, maybe he might hold something and it might roll into the Rosh Ram right outside the Lechi. But Aslatu is going to come to carry it because uh, the Mubi is not, let's say, roofed to recognize what's Rosh Ram, what's Rosh Hashanah. And you're just sitting right there and you're not going to realize, oh, that's right over the, the entryway of the Mubi and you're going to come to carry it. 
And yet, Vahani Nash, you have these women, the Shakun Chatzvai, they take their pictures of Aslam, but they sit right there by the entry of the Mavai, and we don't tell them anything, even though they're violated under rabbinic law, because the rabbi said, don't sit there. And they're sitting over there. So why don't we tell them anything over there? So if you ask me a question, I can ask you a question back. So Elder Brother, what's the reason? Hanach Lam Yisrael leave the Jewish people, something that they're accustomed to, and they're not going to change anyway. Better let them be considered erroneous and do it by mistake and not do it deliberately because then they're going to violate knowingly and they're not going to leave it anyway. So therefore we don't tell them anything. Now, so therefore, Hachanam, here also by the case you're asking about the slapping and dancing on Yom Tov, Hanachlam, Yisrael, leave the Jewish people, Mutav Shishayim, better let them do it by mistake than deliberately because the enemy is not going to stop. Now, but the Gemara qualifies this importantly. It says, when do we say this, that you leave them and you, you don't say anything? It's regarding rabbinic law, where they've been accustomed to violating rabbinic law, like by the clapping, and by sitting by the open entryway of the Mavi, where it's, it's anyways rabbinic law. Okay, let them, let them do it, don't tell them anything. But they're right, so it's a biblical law, then we don't say this klal of mutav shiyashayki, and you protest, even though let them do it deliberately. Which actually responds back, it says, well, it's actually not true. No, even by biblical law, we don't tell them anything if you know that it's not going to help. Because I'll prove it to you. So at the Sabbath, Yom Kippur, we're adding on to the day of Yom Kippur, where you have to start and start fasting a few minutes before Yom Kippur, which day raisu, that's a biblical law, as the Gemara learns on Yom Kippur, Pe'al, from Abayis, from Benisa, Mesav, Sheikh, and Betisha. What do you mean, Betisha? You don't fast on the 9th, you fast on the 10th. No, you have to add a little bit from the 9th. Yet, Va'ochel, Veshah, Sachach, Sheikh, everyone's hopping around those glasses of water, the Amam is still Shkiev, till it gets dark. And what I mean, no one says anything. You see, because people are not going to stop anyway. And we do say, even by biblical law. Now we said in the Mishnah that we had a contradiction because the Mishnah said, you could start with a new pile of grain that you never used before, even though it wasn't prepared, which obviously you see that there's no problem about muktzah. In contrast to the next halacha, because Amr of Kahame says, oh, what you see from this halacha is, you could start by something that was stored away even though it's going to, you expect it to be there for a long time, like over here where you never had designated this, this straw for anything else, that generally you'll leave it for the animals whenever you need it, then no, on Yom Tov you could start initially using it for, for your fuel, for whatever you want to use on Yom Tov. So Mami, who's the Tan of the Mishnah? Must be Reb Shimon, he must be going like Reb Shimon. The Leslie Moksa doesn't hold up, quote unquote, Allah is a Moksa. The problem is, Amos say, but look at the next statement. The next statement says, you cannot use the wood that's in the backyard, which is generally stored away for a long time. What do you mean, Aslan That's not Reb Huda. This like Mukta that he holds a Mukta. So how to resolve the contradiction? So the Gemara, I'll tell you. Hacha, the safe, yes. Really, the Mishnah is like Reb Shimon. So how do we understand the halacha, the safe, regarding the Eitzim Shabbat Mukta? That's by Arze. That's by the cedars of Ashuche, and regarding the female cedars, that's what that's what we're talking about. Where a person generally does not use them as fuel because they're very expensive wood and use it for building. Ah, that's the Mukta Machmas Kesar and Kif. That's Mukta because of a of a loss of money, where it's very expensive, ah, my fellow Rabbi Shimon, my dear Rabbi would agree that then it's going to be us, and therefore it could be even like Rabbi Shimon. Now, Ikidim Asr, those actually learned the teaching of Rabbi Kahana, a Seifa, that it's, he started first in the Seifa, and therefore he came up with an opposite conclusion. The Seifa says, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, but you cannot start taking the wood from the Mukta from the backyard. Amr of Kahani says, I say, Master, Allah seems to tell us that you cannot start with a, something that was stored away for a long time initially on Yom Tov. So Mali, who's the town of the Mishra? Be Hudi, Shabi Hudi, the Islay Mukta, who holds a Mukta. Promise a Marisha, look at the first Allah. Maskil Mariah said, Devin, you could start just with a new pile of straw, even though it wasn't appeared. Asan Rib Shimon, that's not like a friend, the Leslie Mukta doesn't hold the Mukta. So the Gemara says, no, it is like a Be like we said in the Sefer. Saharian said the Risha, that it's Mukta. Ah, because Hassan Batib Nesarya, they were talking about spoiled straw, which is already deteriorated, which is not fit for animal fodder, and generally you'll use it as fuel and not for eating. And therefore it's not really lo- it so that you're gonna keep it for a long time for your animals, because it's, it's something that, of course you're gonna use it for fuel, because it's already spoiled, and even the animal's not gonna eat it. So you must just tab Nasaria that it's spoiled, hachaz latino, what I mean, you could use it for clay to go out and make bricks, so you would store it away for a long time. It should be mukta according to Behuda. No, it says, the Gemara, you just know there's thorns over there, and you can't knead it with your hands and your feet because of the thorns, and therefore, you're not going to use it for anything else but fuel, and therefore, actually, even according to Behuda, it's not going to be mukta because, yeah, you know you're going to be using it, even though you're not using it right now.
So we continue to Amit Beis with the Mishnah that continues with a related halacha that we mentioned in the previous mission, which we were discussing wood. We are speaking about that how maybe if someone's bringing, we're going to open the chol, that one is not allowed to take, eat some Sheva Mokta. So that, that relates to another halacha related to Yom Tiv, related to wood. So the mission begins, You can't take wood from a hut. Now, we're talking about, although we're actually now in the end of the sukkahs, but we're talking about, let's say, on Pesach, on Shavuos, we are sitting in the sukkah, a hut, in a garden or an orchard, you now take wood from the sukkah, only that which is near the sukkah. Now, at this point, the Gemara understand, would understand that if it's thick, meaning you put a lot of reeds near the sukkah, you're allowed to take from them. The Gemara's going to ask, what do you mean that's that saisa? It's one of the laws of demolishing the oil, because since it nullified, it's secondary to the schach, any little bit that you take from it is considered steer. What does it help that it's law that you made it thicker, let's say, more than you needed for the roof? Why would that be permitted? So the Gemara actually jumps in right now and says that question. The Gemara says, Maishnam and Asuk the law. What's the reason that you're telling me from the actual Sukh itself that you can't take off because it's Saiser? What do you mean? Also, from that which is uh, near it is also considered Saiser of the oil. What should be the difference? Someone reads Mishmuli says, Oh, I'll tell you, my Samach, what does it mean that uh, nearby? But that means actually Samach le defamis. It actually means that it's near the walls. So, like Rashi explains, if you have, let's say, a pile of reeds that are standing upright uh, near the walls, since it wasn't woven together with the wall, it's not considered secondary to the wall, because, as Rashi explains, in contrast, you can't compare it when you have, let's say, a pile of reeds near the schach, because the schach is not woven anyway. So therefore, everything is equal. Whatever's on the top or on the bottom, it would all be schach, would be considered bottle to it, and there would be considered a problem about or oil. But when you have it near the wall, the wall is woven together, and if you have something near it, that wouldn't be a problem about being seisu to the oil. That's one approach. The Gemara brings another approach, and says that Rav Menashe, he says, I thought it You could even say, no, it's not near the walls, rather, like Rav explained, it's near the schach, as we had originally explained. But Kitanya, he, the Mishnah, was talking about Be'istur Yasa. We're talking about we have bundles of reeds which were placed on the schach, and from the fact that you didn't untie the bundles, it's not secondary, it's not bottled to the schach, rather you're just putting it to put it away there and to conceal it over there. So there's two explanations why you're telling me you allowed to take from the, what's near. Again, you can't take anything from the sukkah because that's considered seiser. But when saying that's samach law, either because it's near the walls and that's not considered bottle because that's not woven with it and it's obvious it's not part of it, or no, it's even on the schach. But since you didn't untie the bundle, so therefore you could tell that it wasn't there as to become, if you had like some bamboos laying on top of it, that would be bottled to it and it would be a problem. But here, where it's tied together, it's not considered as secondary. Now, the Gemara brings a brisa that elaborates on the law of our Mishnah. So Tanya of Chir Bar Yisuf Kamej Rabbi Yechanan, Chir Bar Yisuf taught a brayser in front of Rabbi Yechanan that said the halacha by Mishnah, but one more opinion. Ain not leitim la sukkah. The Tanakama says like the halacha by Mishnah. I'll take wood from a from a hut. Elam la samach la only that which is near the hut. But Rabbi Shimon not. Rabbi Shimon says you could even take from the schach. The Gemara is going to ask to say, oh, what do you mean that seister? That's the malching oil. Now Bishav and they both agree, which is this is in Yon the Diyama the sukkah sachag bachag regarding the hut of the yomtiv on the yomtiv of Sukkis, with their shasur, then it's forbidden to take away even a chal shomayeh, as Gemara is going to explain later on. And everyone agrees to that. Now, from his but let's say you made a stipulation, you made it tonight before yomtiv, that you don't want to separate from it. Hakolofi tonight, everything goes according to your condition. Now, but the Gemara asks and says the obvious question, Rebshim not Rebshim let you take from the sukkah, let's say Pesach, Shavuot, remember it is on Yom Tiv, but you're demolishing the oil, you're taking away from the oil. Nachman Yitzchik says, no, hacha besukkah nefeles, as you know, you say, a yakim la no sukkah is never on the He Here we're talking about a, a sukkah that fell on Yom Tiv, so there's no problem at steer so because it fell, it's on the ground, there's no more oil. Ah, so why is the Tanakhama say it's problematic to go ahead and take away the wood from the sukkah? Oh, that's because of muktza. Because Bein Hashemash is by Twilight when Yom Tov started, the, the, the sukkah was standing. And now, even though it collapsed, so there's no problem at Seisr, but it's, it's Muktza Machmas Isr. What's the Muktza Machmas Isr? It means to say that when Yom Tov or Shabbos started, there was an Isr to do, use these things, which was of demolishing. So although now, now there's no more problem at Seisr, but it has Allah of Muktza of the, the Isr of Stira. But that which is Samach Lom, like the Tanakh Hamas said, that wasn't Muktza because that didn't have a problem about Stira. And Rabbi Shimon Tamei, Rabbi Shimon goes according to his reasoning that we know throughout Shas, the Leslie Mukta, he doesn't hold of halacha of Mukta, and therefore it's not going to be a problem. The Tanakh, like Lerner Brisa, famous Rabbi Shimon, which had Mesech the Shabbos, 
Moisa Hashem and Shabbat Nebuch Shabbat Leftover oil in the lamp or in a plate, which was you have oil that was placed for the lighting of the lamp on Shabbos. And let's say it went out. So you have leftover oil, that's muktza, and if it's going to be Oster, says the Tanda Kama. That's like Rabbi Huda, where we have throughout Shas, like in the Sakta Shabbos. Rabbi Shimon, not to, Rabbi Shimon says it's permitted, because again, Rabbi Shimon does not hold of the halachal problem about muktza. Rabbi says, wait a second, wait a second. How you could, how could you, could, well, we all deserve to get now. It's, it's, it's chal HaShemayim. We're not going to wait. It doesn't even have, is it? But it's chal HaShemayim. We all want. This is a Yamdu tree. This is... <laughs> so the Gemara says, Mi dami? Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. So the Gemara says, Mi dami? The Gemara says, is it comfortable? says, You can't compare the two halachas. You're trying to tell me, that he holds that the sukkah that fell on Pesach, let's say, that even though now there's no problem about Tzayis, but what's it, Muktzah doesn't hold the Muktzah, and I'll, I'll show you, where does Rav Shimon hold like this? By a lamp, when it goes out. says the Gemara, that's not the same exact thing. Because their person's anticipating and waiting when this lamp going to go out. He knows it's ultimately going to go out. So he's thinking about that there's going to be some leftover oil. Do you think a person sitting here waiting, when is his sukkah going to collapse? What do you think? He's a prophet. He knows it's ultimately going to fall down the next day. A person doesn't wait and anticipate his car is going to get smashed on his way to give a shear. He got a huge bash in the back of his car. He's going to get insurance money. doesn't think that. That way, when's it going to happen? Is it, he knows he doesn't think it's going to happen. So, so what are you comparing he says, no, our Mishnah, our Bryce is told about We're talking about a shaky sukkah. Oh, already yesterday he's thinking, okay, this one's not going to last a long time. And tomorrow it actually fell. So the Reb Shimon, who doesn't hold the mukta because he holds him at Motati Lebe, yeah, from yesterday he's already thinking about it. Whereas according to Tanakama, he holds you not thinking about it by anything that you don't have it fit right now by Bein And that's the Machlechus. But again, Rib Shimon holds that it's not going to be a problem by Muktza because it's a Sukkot Uyu, which is similar to the Moses Shem and Shebener, And that's why he holds that you even allowed to take from the collapsed Sukkot on the Yomtev. Now, the Bryce has said that Beshav and everyone agrees the Sukkot Sachag Bechav, which we're talking about in Yonah the Yonah, up until we're talking about a Sukkot, it's just a name, a generic name for a Hav, on some other Yomtev. Now, however, everyone agrees on the Sukkot of Sukkot she has Surah where, oh, that's forbidden to take from it, even on Chalot Shemayim. Now, then the, the Bryce has said, the Mishnah, but if you made a stipulation, because we know that's how long ago, Huk the Mitzvah, so it said it's like a Mitzvah, but if you made it tonight, how call it tonight, everything's according to your stipulation. That's what says, me, Mahan, but tonight, does it really help to make it tonight that you want to be able to use from the wood of the sukkah that it shouldn't be forbidden for Huk Mitzvah and Sukkah? But how do you know that the wood of a sukkah is forbidden all seven days of sukkah? Remember, like it says, the pasuk in Yikra, Chag Hasukkah Shivas Yom LaHashem. The Yom of Sukkah is seven days for Hashem. That sounds like all seven days. It's for Hashem. It's hectic. And the time when the Brayis said, "Who the Ben Meseri Me says," he elaborates on this. He says, "Menayin Shekashem Shachal Shem Shemayim Alachagiga." How do you, from where do you know that just like? God's name takes effect on the Chagiga, which refers to the Shalmei Chagiga. In, 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 in Talmudic times, they used to go and Mishnah them, they bring a, a Shlom in every single Yom to the Shalmei Chagiga, which is forbidden the moment you are sanctifying it. Just like that becomes Hektish, Kalchal, Shem Shemayim al so too does the name of heaven take effect on the Sukkah, because Talmud says in the Apostle, like, Chag HaSukkah, Shivas Yom Lashem, although we generally translate it as the Yom to the Sukkah, seven days of Hashem, but the word Chag could refer to the Chagiga and Sukkah to the Sukkah. So Machag Lashem, just like the Chagiga is for Hashem, it's Hektish. Of Sukkah Lashem, so too the Sukkah is for Hashem, meaning it's also Hektish. And it says, Shivas Yadim. So you see that it's sanctified for seven days. How can you make it nice saying that you don't want it to become forbidden? <coughs> so Amad Av Menashia, Reh he says, Oh, I'll tell you. Because Seifa, the Seifa, the Bryce that says, if you made it tonight, it's going to help. Asayin L'Sukkah Di Alma. That's referring to a general, generic hut and the other time. The re- and it's going back on the Reish of the Brisa. We had a Machlegi Tanakam of Rebbe Shimon, which they said in generally, are you, if you allowed to take wood from a sukkah or not? And we had explained just before in the Gemara that it's someone where the sukkah fell. And the, the reason why it would be problematic or not is because of Muktzah. Uh, that's what the Brisa is saying, that if you made it tonight, from before Yom Tov, let's say before Pesach Hashluis, that if it's going to fall tomorrow, you're going to use it for fuel, then it's according to the stipulation, because that's not Muktzah. Then everyone would agree it's Muktzah. You're already prepared. You're saying you're having that in mind. It just didn't fall yet. That's what he's saying, Bishab. Of a sukkah the mitzvah, you're right. The sukkah of the mitzvah, sukkah is lemhanim No one's saying that it's nine would help because it's asr for seven days. It doesn't help to make it deny to make it not asr. 
That lefitanoi was the sukkah di alma. And this that we're proving that you cannot make a tanai is by the sukkah of mitzvah. Oh, that the Gemara says, is that really so? The sukkah the mitzvah loi? Really by sukkah of sukkahs, you're not allowed to make a tanai? I, by the time the Bryce that says, sechecha kil chasa. Let's say someone made the schach of the sukkah according to the halacha. And the itra, and he decorated beautifully bekramim with different colored garments, ubesadinen, and with these uh, white linen sheets, hamitsuyarn that are embroidered, vatolaba goizim, and they went and they hung up on it nuts, eshkedim, and almonds, zafraskim, and peaches, with emoinim, and pomegranates, beautiful sukkah, pachila novim, and they have wreaths of grapes, yenis, shmanim, and sulasis, wines, oils, and flowers, if you want any more. Uh, sukkah, no, sukkah ideas is telling you, and how do you hang up wine? Like Rashi explains, it's in cups of glass where you're hanging these things for beauty. That Tarshi Bol, and they have wreaths of grain. Also, the stuff you're not allowed to use these, no, you're sukkah, it's considered hooked to the like until after the last days of sukkah. Now, the Mishnah Lamb, he made it tonight. He said, No, I want to be able to use it over sukkah. I call it tonight. Everything is according to his tonight. Oh, and, and then you're allowed to use it. Now, Rashi points out what the Gemara's question is. And the fact that you're telling me for the Noy Sukkah, you're not allowed to use them, obviously, that means the Noy Sukkah is considered bottled to the Sukkah. And the Vahaz Allah like the Sukkah, because why, why should Noy Sukkah be also to use? It only says in the Torah, Chag HaSukkah Shem Yom Lashem, that it's the Sukkah that's compared to the Chag, to the Chagiga, that's Asr. We don't want to find any Noy Sukkah. Now, obviously, because the Noy Sukkah is bottled secondary to the Sukkah. And yet still you tell me that the Tanai is going to be effective. I thought you told me Tanai is not effective on the Sukkah. And, and the Noy Sukkah is the same thing as the Sukkah. So by Barabba Dhamma Tavayu, they both say that no, you cannot compare the Sukkah regarding the Halachas of, of Tanai to the Noy Sukkah, even though the Noy Sukkah is bottled to the Sukkah. Because when is it effective to make a Tanai? When you say before Yom Tev, you say, I'm not removing myself from them, that I should have any rights and abilities to take the Noi Sukkah. Call the entire span of time of Ben Hashmashis, of the twilight of Arab Yom Tev. So therefore, when the Yom Tev starts, which is when the Kedusha is supposed to take effect on the Yom Tev items, the Lechol Kedusha Layu. The sanctity is not going to take effect on it because you're saying I'm not removing my rights from it, and therefore it does not become hooked to But that can only work for the for the Noi sukkah. That can't work for the sukkah itself because as the Gemara says, "Well, Atzi sukkah," but the wood of the sukkah itself, you cannot make a stipul- such a stipulation. But obviously, you have to separate from it by Ben Hashmashim because then you'd be say the Oyel and Ben Hashmashim. Excuse me, the position remains, right? For for which one? Oh, you mean after sukkahs? Yeah. Well, it's considered Tashmish Mitzvah. You could throw it away, just not a Bederich Bezoyim. You shouldn't do it, throw it out into the trash, and it should be in a respectful type of a way. But for Yom Tov itself, it's considered Hukzol and Mitzvah side. But the thing is, is that the wood of the Sukkah itself has a problem about Saiser. It's an Oyo. In Ben Hashmash, as we know, is Safa Yom Tov, and you cannot do Malacha, so it's Katsoy Shiva. It's automatically, by default, it can become the Allah has a Muktzah defined and qualified by the times of Ben Hashmash. Noi sukkah is not necessarily an intrinsic part of the structure, so you could take it off. And therefore, you can make such a tanai that it shouldn't become muktzah. In contrast, the wood of the sukkah itself, you can't say, I'm not, I'm not going to be bite from it called by because that would be a problem at session, and you by default wouldn't be able to do it. Now, the Gemara has one more question. It says, wait a second. Umayish no, so why is it any different that you don't say by an esrik? That because of the first Ben Hashmashes, it's going to be Muktzah for all seven days, and you're only going to say it for one day, that when you make it tonight, as the Gemara says, why is it different from this halacha that we learned? Let's say a guy has, is a Meicher, is a Seicher of Esroigim. He has a lot of, a lot of Esroigim. So he decides every single day he's going to, he's going to market a different one for next day. He's going to have Moroccan and Yemen and Temeni, and he's going to have Chazanish and... He's going to have every day a different one. Yana, the, so every day he uses a different esrik. So Amar he says, Each and every one, you could use it and fulfill it that day. And you can eat immediately. This is that means specifically right away. It means really till the next day, different opinions. But al him, it's because the muktzah of the esrik is limit svasa. The moment you do the mitzvah, so you can go ahead and eat it right away. But Rav Asim, he says, okay, no, you can't eat it right away. It the next day, because since it became, it was Muktzah L'mitzvah by Ben Hashmashes, so it's Muktzah for that whole day of Sukkot. Okay, fine. Eat it right away, we could eat it the next day. But one thing is, 
Why didn't you say the same thing for the wood of the sukkah too? That since you made a stipulation that you can have benefit from it, where Achalamite is no problem about Saiser, you told me you can't do it in Yom Tov. Okay, fine. I understand why it's in the Noyah Sukkot, because it's a problem about Saiser. But why is it less than that of an Esri, where it's like when you're separating it for the first days, why don't you say that by Bena Shmashis, it's only for that first day, but for the rest of Yom Tov, why are you saying it's Chukot Sulmat Fasi for all seven days? You should, uh, Esri Goso is for all seven days, yet you tell me he can make it only for that day and he can use another Esri the next day and could eat it. So, so why, Esri, why Esri can you eat it the next day and then by, Lula, by uh, Sukkah it has to be also all seven days? Like my says, I'll tell you why. Hossam over there by Esri. The Mivsuku Leilis Miyam. The nights are separated from the day because there's no mitzvah of the Lulav and Esri at night time. So, Kachad Machad Yoimus, every single day mitzvah of Nafshihu is considered an independent mitzvah. The nights are not separate from daytime. Well, the sukkah is a 24 7 mitzvah. So, kuliyam, all the days, like the chabiyam and ichthim, is considered as all one long day. And therefore, since we get mukta from the shvena shmash, the beginning of the first night of yom Tid, all that is considered one mitzvah. If you didn't leave your sukkah, you wouldn't have any uh, change of that original mitzvah. And therefore, it's going to be mukta for all seven days, accomplished by Esri, where every day is a new mitzvah, and therefore, it's only going to be mukta for that day. And now for the whole Yom Tov. So you can thank you to any time for hosting us. Oh, yeah.